So my name is Mike Bowers. I manage the uh, Industry and Consumer Affairs Organization and the Service Organization at Coca-Cola in North America. So I've got a contact center uh, of about 400 or so folks, depending on the time of the year. So my perspective here is really going to be as an operator uh, in the contact center environment and kind of why would you go invest in uh, AI. First test is which button? Nope. Failed the first test. <laughs> So, um, so our case for action at Coca-Cola kind of started with I had to terminate my virtual agent. So we had had a virtual agent, and I virtually fired the virtual agent. We'd had one for a decade or more that was kind of early technology. Okay, it was early technology, not terribly effective. And when we launched our My Coke Rewards promotion, if any of you guys are uh, familiar with that, enter the number from the cap, get a code, uh, the marketing team actually said, take the virtual agent off. It wasn't effective and they didn't think it was in keeping with the tone of the of the uh, the website. So I fired the virtual agent and that's what sent us down the path of trying to replace and get new. So we have two instances of virtual agent. Uh, we've partnered with Nuance on the product. The first is at the coca-colacompany.com. If you go to the coca-colacompany.com, as many, many people do, about 40,000 a day, uh, and go to the contact us section, you'll find our virtual agent. Uh, called Ask Coca-Cola. Uh, the second is the My Coke Rewards site uh, that we talked about, and our virtual agent is much more prevalent on this site. It's at the, on the main page just below the fold. Uh, kind of the case for action and why they were important is different depending on the website. The first one had to do with really being available. Uh, in my contact center, I don't staff 24-7 for our consumer business. We're just there during the heart of the day. And to staff 24-7 would have been very expensive with a lot of idle time. A lot of people are calling Coca-Cola at 2 in the morning in North America. Uh, but there are people on the web that want answers to questions. And the other issue that we have at Coca-Cola is um, spikes in volume. We do things at the company that cause a lot of interest very, very quickly. And trying to staff against that with on-demand folks in a contact center is really ineffective. Can't do it from a cost standpoint. My Coke Rewards, the case for action there was, was really kind of different. Uh, the marketing teams want to spend money on My Coke Rewards on fabulous prizes for people to get when they enter their points and making it a really good marketing program. What they don't want to spend money on is me and people with headsets answering the consumer's questions. So it was really about becoming more cost efficient in channels to be able to address consumers' issues quickly without racking up a huge bill to get that work done. So that was kind of our case for action. As far as how we went about doing it, obviously the first piece was choosing a provider. Uh, and actually, our IT function started that process. So IT went out, they chose a host of vendors based on experience in the market and who was kind of top of mind at the time, uh, looked at their solutions capability, their experience with other companies like ours, uh, their ability to manage the project, because we really expected them to manage the project of integrating with very little input from our side. And then obviously cost played a role in the decision, but we didn't go with the cheapest. We went with what we thought was the best at the time. Another big learning for me in this process was interaction with the site page owners. So if you think about, I'm contact center guy. I'm not the guy that's in charge of the coca-cola-company.com or mycokerewards.com. So we very quickly integrated with those teams because they obviously have a huge point of view on location and what does your avatar look like if you have one? What should the content be like? And we learned very quickly that we should have probably even involved them sooner. Uh, the next piece was identifying rel relevant content. So we thought we knew what the virtual agent should know based on what consumers would ask us through email or phone calls. Uh, we weren't 100% right. The interaction in the channel tends to be a little bit different than a phone call or an email. But we did make sure we had kind of pretty robust information in there from the get-go. So from an execution standpoint, sorry, I have to have some of the product. Uh, uh, again, not a, not, a, not a commercial, just thirsty. Um, <laughs> The first thing that we learned, uh, or the first experience that we had was, you know, I had a contact center to run. I was a very busy guy. All of my managers have people, things to do. So uh, we really relied on the vendor to do a great job around project management, and they did. They held our feet to the fire to the point of being annoying, which was 
need it. I actually had to tell them, leave me alone, stop calling, back off. But at the end of the day, we actually made our deadline and had a very effective uh, instance on both websites with a virtual agent. So having a partner that really pushes you to get content in, get things done, was very important to us. Uh, but then we also had to be really nimble as soon as the agents went live to go modify the content because we weren't 100% right on what we thought the agent would need to know. And then the next piece was we had to take, somebody asked about data and, and uh, you know, what do you do with the back end data? Because now I had to be very quick at going back to the owners of the website and say, see what this got you? Do you see how many contacts we were able to answer and the speed and all those kind of things? So taking that data back creates a hunger for expansion and people wanting to do more with a virtual agent and leverage it in different ways and we've already begun to do that at Coke. Uh, so what do we get? That's Ask Coca-Cola at the coca-cola-company.com. And you can see here from this, uh, probably not well from the distance that you're at, but we average about 15,000 conversations on Coke's virtual agent a month. And if you look at February of this year, we had a pretty significant spike, and we're in the midst of a fairly significant spike now. And I'll talk a little bit about that and our effectiveness with that. And uh, you'd think we'd had a polar bear or something at Ask Coca-Cola. We didn't. We just said Ask Coca-Cola. Uh, and then on... Uh, my Coke Rewards, we actually named the guy, it's Chip. So you have a conversation with Chip at My Coke Rewards. You can see 15,000 conversations a month at the coca-cola-company.com. At My Coke Rewards, it's 30,000. So huge. The interesting, though, is the diversity in the conversations. At the coca-cola-company.com, there are literally tens of thousands of knowledge management articles that it references because the, of the thousands of things people can ask about. At my Coke Rewards, it's very specific to, I can't read my points, I lost my points, so I want some more points, where are my points? And so that site is very effective at reimbursing people's points when they lose them or giving them alternative points when they can't read them. And you'll, we'll talk a little bit about the volume there as well. So I wanted you to take a look at this, and we'll talk about our volume So nothing controversial there. Um, that was an interesting, uh, interesting experience at Coca-Cola. Uh, I actually got notification from the marketing teams that an ad was going to run at the Super Bowl, and we think you ought to know about it. And so my question was, well, what's it about? I mean, we, we can't tell you, but you might want to staff up. And so, <laughs> so I don't have the ability to staff up, you know, that rapidly. And so it was literally the Sunday of the Super Bowl when they shared the comment or the content of the ad with me. And we assumed that it would be, uh, it would stimulate conversation, but we thought that the conversation that it stimulated would be about the diversity aspect of the ad. Uh, and it really was not so much about that. It was more about the languages that were used to sing the song. And we worked with nuance on that Sunday, I was actually on the phone at a Mexican restaurant having lunch, telling them what the content was gonna be so they could update the virtual agent. And then I had my laptop in my lap sitting in front of the television watching the Super Bowl when the ad aired on the phone with our person at Nuance and the virtual agent was being hit about the ad before the ad ended, which goes to show how passionate people are because if you think about the, I, I talked about it, the Coca-Cola company.com, the, Virtual agent isn't on the front page. You have to find, contact us, and, and go find it. And people did that within 20 seconds while they were watching the Super Bowl. So that was spike one. I'll talk about spike two in a little bit. So this piece around being ready when you put your virtual agent in and knowing what content needs to be there is key. This graph highlights the effectiveness or the first contact resolution rate on the coca-cola company.com. And you can see that 
about 80% of the time or more, we're able to answer the consumer's question, which is huge, especially when you're talking about a 24-7 touch. So that's very impactful for us. And you see the kind of uptip in the last month or so, and that has to do with other fun stuff. Whoa, whoa, you can't take that. It's got my name on it. What's the problem? See, nothing ha- Oh my gosh. My voice is so manly. That was amazing. I have to try that. <laughs> you my, my my name just came out of your mouth. Let's see what kind of food there is at the lunch table. Got to get there before Jack Nicholson chugs all the clam chowder. What the cook it down? No. Now! I said no. I don't want to. Oh, God, please, no! 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 Ah, this has been really fun. You sound normal. You sound normal. What candy did you get? What candy did you get? Not an advertisement, a YouTube video that some folks made, but the Share a Coke program at Coca-Cola in North America this year has been a really uh, successful promotion, but it's also driven a huge volume of contacts. And as I said before, staffing up to go meet promotional volume can be really, really difficult. And our virtual agent has had a really high success rate at being able to answer people's concerns. I think putting names on a bottle would be easy, but some people spell Michelle with one L, and some people spell it with two. So we made half of them angry by pushing it just one way. So a lot of contacts there. Uh, with the virtual agent. So I think the core question for anybody in my position, is it worth the investment? Is, it, uh, uh, is the expense in having the virtual agent offset by the not needing as many live agents? So we measure this by simply comparing the cost of delivering the virtual conversation versus what the cost of a live agent would have been. On the CocaColaCompany.com, we just purely go by the number of conversations that were deflected because we assume that a consumer had to navigate to the Contact Us page, so we know that they were going to call. Uh, at the MyCoke Reward site, we look at it differently, and we look at a subset of that number because they may not have intended to call us because the, the virtual agent is prevalent. Um, so in our experience, and I'll, and I'll show you the numbers and probably blank that out later, uh, when, we share the, when we share the presentation, but in our experience based on our assumptions that we've listed, in one month, and I think these are July's numbers, I would have needed 18 more live agents to answer this number of calls. So uh, we don't often think about, you know, it saved this much money. We think about the headcount that we would have needed to have in place and the unusual timing to meet this large amount of volume. So for us, the answer is a clear yes. It saves a lot of money to be available for your consumers in that channel. Uh, some just interesting facts by the numbers. The America is Beautiful ad on that day had 1,300 conversations when it came out, and we deflected or answered the question 88% of the time. Share a Coke so far this summer, we've had over 15,000 conversations with a 94% deflection rate, which is really, really effective. Uh, and then we've built beyond that this year, and we've added our product locator to the virtual agent. So when someone goes to the, uh, the virtual agent and wants to know where I can buy something, uh, our product locator functionality, and we launched LeBron James 6 Mix Sprite this year. So we expanded and grew that over to the Sprite.com website so people could go find this new product. So just a lot of, uh, a lot of deflection, a lot of uh, financial significance in having the tool available. Um, but I don't want to be rosy with everything. We're not perfect. Our, our, uh, we didn't do everything right all the time, and our probably biggest opportunity and thing you can think about is if your virtual agent is going to dispense something that has value to it, then you need to have it really, really well thought out controls in place. So I talked about the MyCoke Rewards website and that the virtual agent had the ability to reimburse points. Well, ours was able to do that. 
uh, it was supposed to be configured in a way that would limit it. It would only allow a single user to do that transactions three times on a given day. Um, hackers found a way to come at it in an automated way and get thousands of points uh, very, very quickly, and they went and redeemed those points to go purchase amusement park tickets and then sold them on the internet for a very large amount of money. We didn't realize this was going, that this was occurring until our vendor notified us. So we were you know, lucky that they were watching it as closely as they do. And we very quickly turned it off and, and fixed the functionality. But uh, that's probably one of the biggest you know, learnings from our standpoint is if your virtual agent's connected to anything of value, you kind of need to work to make it hacker proof. You know, we never thought somebody would want to steal a MyCope rewards point, but you know, you know, frequent flyer mile maybe, but these, no. So. Uh, that was an interesting experience for us as well. So the, the next big learning from us is around the idea of intelligent channeling. And I know it's already been spoken to this morning, but for us, we want to be available all the time. We've learned in our business that if we're not there to talk to our consumers, they're going to talk about us to somebody else. So we want to be available. The intelligent virtual agent lets you do that. We also want to be in the channel, in the channel that consumers want to be in. People don't often, you know, not as much want to pick up the phone anymore. They really want to tap, not talk. Uh, but we think we have learned the ability to architect the experience to leverage getting folks to the right place for us. So we architect our solution to get people to the virtual agent quickly. Um, if the virtual agent isn't able to answer the question, we want them out of there very quickly. So we offer contact information. Or recently, we integrated live chat into our virtual agent. And for that, we try to walk people from the kind of the lowest cost, easiest experience with a virtual agent to the next highest cost and then eventually to a live agent. So that's been very impactful for us and that's a strategy that we're going to continue to expand. So for us uh, around growth and where we are wanting to go next, currently we're just in the consumer space. We've got uh, other spaces, business to business spaces where customers are ordering product from us that we're working on potentially building this kind of functionality out. Uh, looking at customers who are ordering product for individual machines or companies that are ordering product on a large scale. And then uh, the next thing is just getting our integrated virtual agent better all the time. Our agent is much more effective in year two and going into year three than it was on day one. And it gets more effective all the time. The agent actually asks the consumer if they're enjoying the conversation and our scores continue to rise in that area, which is important. So that's kind of what IVA looks like at Coca-Cola. And sorry for the big commercial advertisement there, but we have time for questions if anybody has any. Yes, sir. Could you describe the, the dialogue in the uh, Super Bowl ad, the America the Beautiful ad, and what could you add to it just within the same day that would amplify? So what were, what were customers asking for? What information were you giving them? What did that interaction? The initial dialogue that we had put out was around diversity. So it talked about, you know, Coke being a brand that embraces different cultures and everybody's background and it's ubiquitous and for everyone. A lot of the questions that we got had to do with the song and singing the song in different languages. And so we had to update the dialogue in the virtual agent to reflect that. And there were also a number of consumers that thought that we had uh, showed disrespect to the national anthem. So we had to explain that America the Beautiful isn't the national anthem. <laughs> We're going to bleep that part now. Here you go. Yes, sir. Um, congratulations. That's excellent. Um, one of the questions I have is, with all your success, why is your virtual agent below the fold? That's a great question. And my virtual agent partners ask me that a lot. Um, it, not my decision. Uh, first, it was the marketing teams wanting to have uh, first things first on the page. So. Uh, we're actually sunsetting the current MyCoke reward site and moving to a new version uh, that I haven't seen yet. But we're making a big play to have it much more upfront. Uh, and then at the Coca-Cola company, I think the big reason that it's kind of back at Contact Us is because it's North America centric and the page is meant to be global. So that's kind of, but I think over time as people at, at our company become more comfortable with the channel, it'll move a little further forward and a little further forward. Or, and, and could it be on every page? I mean, that, that would be the other. Yeah, or float or hover. Again, we're, we're new. Uh, we're new at this, and so we, were, we are a very conservative bunch. Yeah. And, you know, we were worried that it could explode all over everything. So, yeah. you know, we, we took, we've taken a very, very cautious and slow approach. 
And similar to Ron's question about the, uh, what, what questions were being asked about our non-national anthem, what, what are the questions around the names on the cans? What, what are those start with? Uh, a lot of it has to do with I can't find my name on the product. <laughs> So a lot of people go, you know, with names that are not on the list of, I, I don't remember, there was two or three hundred different names that we printed. It was where can I find product with names on it and where can I find products with this specific name? And then people wanting to order product for, like family reunions, I want a can of Coke or a bottle of and, Coke with everybody's name on it. And can you fulfill on that through the virtual assistant? Not currently. Okay, just checking. More to come. And, and one last thing and then we have a question. The, um, not last thing. Uh, you showed a portal that looked like it was a, an age, a, you, there was a, it said smart. Um, when you were talking about B2B, oh, yeah. is that a future? Is, uh, that's a website called Coke Smart. And if you guys are familiar with uh, our freestyle dispensers, that's the dispenser with the touch screen that you can get all kind of over 100 different flavors. That has a very different supply chain and customers who are ordering the cartridges that fit in that machine go to cokesmart.com. And we're looking at potentially expanding virtual agent to that website as well to help with ordering or questions about that particular channel or dispenser or product. Um, can you speak to the, the sort of the, the experience you have of modifying dialogues, both you know, how it works proactively to change them to keep up and also reactively? I mean, some of you, you touched on, but can you get maybe more details on how that works in time and effort level? You know, that, that's a really good question because I'll go back to kind of our ignorance. When we had the virtual agent that we fired, the reason that that virtual agent was a poor performance because we didn't do anything to it. We didn't think about it. It was out of sight, out of mind. We didn't do a lot around uh, keeping it relevant. When we launched these two instances, uh, and this sounds like a nuanced commercial and I don't mean it to, but they really worked well with us to challenge us on keeping the content accurate and up to date. So they had to push us because we're all, you know, something shiny. We're looking at something else and not thinking about it. Uh, and then over time, we've learned the value of doing it ourselves. A great example, I don't know if you guys saw anything in the news, but Surge is a product that Coca-Cola manufactured decades ago. And there was a huge online campaign to bring it back. And we said no for years, and we brought it back Monday. Uh, in limited release, you can only buy it through Amazon. Uh, and we knew about that in advance, so we were able to get content ready to go on the moment on the 15th to have it out there. So there's event-based where you can keep things up. And then obviously our uh, PAC organization at headquarters is aware of things that will break in the media or are just broke in the media and those kind of things. And we keep those updated. And then we have monthly routines with the provider to go back and review the data in an analytical way to see where we might add or modify content. We have a lot of people coming to the website asking how they can apply for a job. So we've gotten better with the content around that. So it's that kind of monthly rigor that helps us keep it better. It's a, it's a different question, um, but thank you. Uh, you mentioned the escalation pathway to, uh, to chat, and my question was, is that escalation always initiated by the person, or do you, at times, have your systems initiate the escalation? I knew there'd be a test question that I wouldn't be sure of the answer to. Uh, if I remember correctly, and I think Insa's in the back of the room, she would know, uh, but I think you know we limit the topics Right now, because we're so new in chat, I have very limited staff against it, so we limit the topics that prompt chat. So the integrated virtual agent knows that if I get questions on these five things, then I will prompt for chat. If it's about a different topic, it doesn't even go there. We control the volume by removing or adding dialogue or by turning it off by not being in the channel at the time. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Did I say that right, Insa? Is that how we did it? Okay. You get an A. It's all the caffeine. So you, it sounds like you're obviously a, a champion for this technology within your company. I'm just curious, like in terms of the organizational structure, who, who do you have to um, kind of try to sell this to? And like as, you're, as, you're, as you develop the business case initially, who did you sell it to? And as you're trying to, you know, get more, um, you know, get, get that virtual agent higher up in the, in the recognition or whatever of the company. What, how, how do you manage that through the organization? That's a really, really great question. You know, the first round of this was not even driven by me. It was an IT project to sunset old technology. So it was a refresh that, was, that I didn't have to sell to anybody. They just came knocking on the door and said, you're going to get a new virtual agent. 
where it became selling for me was moving it off the CocaColaCompany.com site onto my CokeRewards.com website, and I had to sell to that group that, that you needed this. Uh, and I, I talked about the fact that the My Coke Rewards site, I think there are upwards of 25 million members of My Coke Rewards now. We have as many consumer interactions on the My Coke Rewards website than we do across all of the brand sites. It's just a heavy touch avenue. So I had to, you know, I built Excel, ROI model, assumptions around how many uh, conversations would deflect live contacts. And then I actually, we built rigor into the monthly reporting that we get from the vendor that goes back and validates those savings. Um, and, and there's a business routine that I have to go back to my leadership to validate the savings every month to make sure that the system is hitting the ROIs that we expect. And, and just sort of as a follow-up, what, what, what functional group are, are you in? How, how is that defined? And then was there, would you call it a working group or team that made the decision to move over uh, or, or to launch um, a, a virtual assistant? Yeah, my uh, position in the organization is in our customer care division. So half of the folks that work for me are taking care of interacting with consumers. The other half are interacting with customers that are calling because their vending machine or cooler or dispenser isn't working. So when we're in that consumer care space, I'm very operational, very transaction sort of guy. Uh, we had to build a coalition in these two implementations. With My Coke Rewards, it was with the marketing team who manages that platform and a little IT. On the CocaColaCompany.com, it was put in as part of a migration to the latest site that's called Coca-Cola Journey. And so we partnered with that group in public affairs when we put it in there. It's, it's amazing. And, and, and you're a large organization. Is, is there sort of a, how, how much time was allocated to this sort of team building to, to get uh, None. You just sort of squeeze it in between the other events of the day. It was just a, a, a thing you had to go do. So we didn't prioritize a lot of time. It goes back to on the slide where I talked about the execution. We really leaned on the vendor quite a bit to drive and make things happen because we everybody had a full calendar and was busy all the time. Right, right. Anything else? Time for one more question. Are you tying your um, knowledge management system behind your virtual agent to uh, the same knowledge management system that your reps are using, or are they separate? And if you're tying them together, what platform are you using to do that? Is that vendor-driven? We don't tie them together virtually today, uh, and that's really only because we're about to sunset the solution we're in to move to a new solution. And when we get into the new solution, uh, our intention is to connect the two at the time. But what we find is, like, when we, we've architected our knowledge management to have, res, you know, this is the response that the virtual agent would give. This is the response we expect you to give if you're on the phone. This is the response we expect you to give if you're sending an email, because now it's in writing. And then here's your social response and your live chat response, because each of them have different nuances. And so, yeah, we intend to connect uh, when we move to our next technology. We just haven't decided on the vendor yet. Actually, I lied. We have time for more questions. Nope. Nope. We're recording this for posterity. So. It's about the importance of conversation. What I'm kind of curious is, what's the average number of questions or interactions a consumer actually has with you on, on Ask Coke? Is it, is it a question? Is it 10 questions? things of that nature, because I think the, the gap between having this great conversational agent and one that is kind of one and done, answers your question and you're on your way, might be valuable to some of the companies here that may expect that you have to have this ongoing conversation to actually gain value. What's your perspective on that? The, the classic it depends answer. <laughs> uh, if you're on my Coke Rewards and the question is can you reimburse me for a lost PIN code, it's very much question asked question answered in two or three back and forth because some information has to be exchanged and that's that's very quick. At the CocaColaCompany.com, because of the, the disparate nature of the conversations, they can go longer. It can be a lot of back and forth. One thing that we've learned and that we try to do is not to let that go on too long uh, and offer contact us information if we believe that the consumer is starting to get frustrated at all. Because at the end of the day, our product is food 
And so if there's an issue, we want to know about it very quickly. And so we route them to a live channel very quickly. And then we watch that. I, I talked about the agent asking the consumer if they're enjoying the conversation. We watch that metric. And if it starts to go in the wrong direction, we go back and look at the subject matter and topic to see how we need to change and configure to make it a more pleasing interaction. You guys are making me earn my supper today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, I was just wondering if you using some kind of like sentiment analysis to understand when people are getting fed up with a conversation, or is it just time based or having to answer a question? Or the, the, your question that you were posing: Are you enjoying your conversation? Currently, that's that's the primary method of doing it. Other than going in and looking at. Uh, you know, we kind of have four metrics, channel, deflected, escalated, or abandoned. We'll go in and we can look at those as well and then go dial back into the ind individual conversations to see if there was something that occurred in the conversation that was either, you know, not rewarding, inappropriate, whatever. But uh, the happiness question is kind of the, the first metric and then we look at deflection rates and those other, you know, three metrics on how successful it was. And if we start having a higher degree of people abandoning, or being forced to channel over to talking to an agent, we'll go look at that individual subject area and then see what we weren't asking correctly or answering or recognizing we update from there. So it's about yes. Unless it's something that we know is coming at us, you know, like knowing that Surge was gonna be relaunched or knowing that the Super Bowl ad was gonna air, so we were able to, but you have to very quickly, you're assuming you know what the conversation's gonna be. You don't always know, or we didn't always know. Here's a curveball. So, um, My Coke Rewards is a loyalty program. Mm -hmm. um, putting names on cans is, is sort of a form of personalization. And I'm just wondering how personalized a Coke experience is becoming and whether, like, you know who's calling, you know, when they're repeat, repeat callers, are they authenticating themselves? And is there going to be sort of a more personalized Coca Cola experience or relationship with? customers on my coke rewards because it's a rewards, rewards program people are logging in a password yeah, okay. and an id so they do authentic so yeah so we have some pii about them wow. and the virtual agent is aware of that and it carries that through to the live chat if we take them down that channel so it, it does go there uh, at the coca-cola company.com we don't have any identifying yeah. information there but i do think over time especially when you start going b2b with it that it'll carry personalization if you want to call that we just aren't there yet interesting Last? Oh. Are you doing any other languages outside of English, or is English the only thing you're supporting right now? English now, just English. Okay, well join me in thanking Michael. Thank you. Thank you.